Hey, it's Ben here from the Strength Factory, and in this episode of Factory Knowledge, I'm gonna be talking to you about testing, and specifically on-bike testing. So we're getting out of the gym, away from the turbo trainer, and we're gonna hit the road and hit the trails to see how it goes. I'm gonna get changed, I'm gonna get on the bike, it's gonna be cold, it's gonna be wet, it's gonna be fun. First of all then, why is testing important? Like, why does it matter? Well, whether you call it testing or just measuring your fitness or just seeing where you're at, it does exactly that. It tells you where your fitness is at on a given day. Uh, and that's really valuable. Number one, it helps you to evaluate your training. So let's say you test today and then test again in four weeks and you're no fitter, you're no quicker, then something's wrong, either with your training, your recovery, your energy levels and so on. So that's, that's gonna give you a good clue. If in four weeks you're faster, then guess what, things have gone well and potentially you've learned something then about which training works for you and how to go on training in the future. The other great thing about testing is that it's great for motivation. You know, if you're gonna be out slogging yourself doing intervals and doing your press ups and your squats in the gym or at home, then it's really good uh, so it's really good motivation if you actually see some results. Imagine if you do all that work and you're not really sure if you're fitter, not sure if you're faster. Well, that's a great way to end up quitting. Testing is really good for letting you know that your training is working, letting you know that the hard work is worth it. And it's gonna help keep you on the straight and narrow, keep you training, especially through these long, dark winter months. We're gonna start off on the road, even though I'm on the mountain bike, uh, just to show you, you've got two different options. Now the road is great because it's consistent and it's controlled, like whether it's wet or dry, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference, but we've got traffic and things like that. So there's pros and cons. Plus who likes riding on the road when you could be in the woods? Anyway, I am about to head up to a hill by my house called Belmont Hill. It's a bit of a classic climb in the Bristol area. It's 91 meters vertical and 1.3 kilometers long and I've just had a look at Strava and some animal does it in just over two and a half minutes. Now I know that my best ever time which is on a gravel bike back in the summer is just under five minutes okay and I know I'm going to be nowhere near that today because I'm not as fit plus I'm on a mountain bike with big sticky tires. So jump on board we're going to hit the first test and talk you through how to get the test done. So that's my warm-up complete and I'm about to hit my test on Belmont Hill. Now, I'm not gonna use Strava or anything, it's not accurate enough. I'm gonna use the lap button on my computer, and what I use here is this prominent line in the road just after the speed limit sign. And that's what I use every time I test here. I don't need to write it down, because I've done, I've ridden up this hill so many times, okay? And remember, I'm gonna use the lap button. And then at the top of the hill, if I'm not blowing, I'm gonna show you my finish line. So here we go, lap button, and off we go. This is gonna be grim, especially on a mountain bike. Whew. Here's my marker. Stop. Ah. So here we go. I'm on the top of the hill there, Belmont Hill. I actually forgot to look when I hit the lap button, but at least I remember to press the lap button. It was pretty gross. I haven't done much intensity this January with lockdown and all the fucking stress, but it is what it is. I think it's about six minutes, which is nowhere near my best, but I'm on a mountain bike with nobody tires, backpack, chesty on, restricting the breathing, and it's not about how fit I am anyway. So, things to make sure you do. Number one, record exact start and finish points. If it's a new place you're using for training and testing, then write them down, put it in your phone. Don't just use Strava, because it's gonna be all over the place. Number two, use the lap button on your computer or on your watch, 
which I'd suggest you put on the bars because it'll be easier to operate. You can just use a stopwatch on a phone, but you're probably gonna have to mount it on your bars if you're gonna do that. Um, if you've got lots of bikes and stuff, then make sure you record which bike you're on. Normally I wouldn't do this on a mountain bike, but I'm gonna go to the woods and film that now. And then yeah, jot it down along with your average and maximum heart rate. And that's your baseline, that's your test. That's where you're at now. And that's where we're gonna build from. We've left the roads behind now and we're in the woods where we belong. Cause let's face it, who likes riding on the road anyway? What it does have though is it's really controllable. Like even if it's wet or dry, it's kind of the same. So it makes it really repeatable, but you've got traffic and things like that. I mean, you saw there quite a lot of vehicles passing me, including like a real stinky van, which is minging when I was really blowing, but it is what it is. Now, here in the woods, it's great because we don't have the traffic and the pollution, um, but what we do have is more varied conditions which are gonna affect your efforts. And so something you're gonna need to record is the trail conditions. So if you do the first test in the bone dry and the second test in peanut butter mud, then it's not ideal, okay? The, the, uh, the results aren't gonna add up necessarily. So that is a limitation to off-road testing. Now, different things that we can do off-road. Number one is actually, because the average speed is so much slower, is that we can do some longer efforts. So you might be able to get a 15, 20, or 30 minute climb off road. Whereas I don't know anywhere where you can do that in the UK. Drop it in the comments if you do. Um, and so that means that we can test different aspects of your fitness, depending on what your goals are and what you're working on. And you could even use it for something like a functional threshold heart rate test you could do off road. Really safe, um, doesn't matter if it's that controlled or not. And then you can set your training zones off of that. So we're going to do a couple of things here in the woods. First of all, we're going to do a similar to what we did earlier. We're going to do roughly a three minute climb. Okay, just to show you, you know, we've got different options, different durations. And then we're going to do what I call a cross country loop test. This is something that I use with the athletes I coach online. And it's also something that I use as part of my complete mountain bike program. And people all over the world use this to see how fast and see how fit they're getting after all their hard work. So we're going to jump on board. There's going to be some more suffering. This time though, it's in the, it's in the wet and in the mud. It's going to be a bit gross, but we all know that's why we're here. We love it. Here we are. We're just going to do some off-road testing. We're going to go for about a three minute climb. Again, I know these woods really well. So we've got a prominent track junction here and just at the junction, there's a route. Okay. So you need to record your exact start and finish and then I'm gonna use the lap button. So here we go. Uh, lap. Come on, Ben. Here it is. Oh, look at that. Two, 259. <laughs> I was aiming for three minutes. And there it was. There you go then, that's the first off-road test example. Like that was three minutes. Could have been five minutes, could have been six, you know. It doesn't matter that much as long as it's repeatable. And that means recording accurately your start and finish points using the lap button not just Strava okay and you know keeping track of trail conditions things like that now a note on field based training whether it's road or off road is I wouldn't really do stuff much under three minutes roughly when we're in the realms of 30 seconds one or two minutes actually it's really hard to measure any improvement in, unless you make a massive gain okay and actually you know, the inaccuracies of when you press your lap button and things like that, they're going to affect the results a lot more than your actual fitness. You know, if you want to do, you know, 30 second, one minute efforts and, and measure that, 
and that's best done in a controlled environment indoors on a watt bike or turbo trainer, smart trainer or something like that. The last test I'm going to talk you through now is something I call the cross country loop test. Although it can also be done on the road if you can find a safe loop to do it. And this is a longer duration test that's going to challenge a broader range of your riding abilities. Okay. And put simply, it's a test anywhere in the region of like 20 to 40 minutes, depending on your goals, how fit you are and how hard and how long you want to push. And it can be a single loop. Okay. That you time a loop of a trail center is ideal. Okay, because then it generally they're surface, so that makes it more repeatable, and you've got those defined start and finish points. Okay, you can usually put a real good shift in around a trail center, although if it's narrow, you may hit some traffic. I can do it here in my local woods, there's a loop that I can use, and generally I'm going to be looking at doing two or three laps of that loop up the fire road that I just did the three minute test on, down a trail, back to the bottom again, and we loop round again. And this is going to give you a picture of your all round riding, so it includes descending as well, which is where it's 2021. I have to give you that disclaimer. You'd seriously be sensible. You do this at your own risk. You've got to give way to other trail users. Uh, just because you're doing a test doesn't mean everyone else has to get out of the way. And if you go in max gas, you know, as fast as you can when you're out of breath, then the risk of crashing is increased. So be careful, be sensible. Okay, and don't blame me if you eat shit while you're doing this test. Anyway, it's a really great way to monitor your progress, okay, because doing a longer test like that is going to really show your aerobic fitness, but it's also going to show the gains that maybe you've made in your skills, in your strength, and in your explosiveness, linking bits of trail together. It could be all the way up, all the way down, or more undulating, up and down, up and down, it doesn't matter. You can start at the top of the hill, you can start at the bottom of the hill. Again, it doesn't matter as long as you know it, it's repeatable and you can reproduce it to retest to measure your progress. That wraps up my video on testing out on the bike. And as usual with all things training, you can make it as simple or as complicated as you like. And what I love about this is that number one, you're out on your bike, even though it's raining. And number two, it's super simple as long and effective as long as you, you know, record a few basic facts to make the, the training and the testing repeatable. Remember that if you like this video, make sure you give it a big fat thumbs up. Drop me a comment, you know, what do you want me to make my next video about? I'm on lockdown at the moment and the gym is shut. So I've got time on my hands and I wanna really work hard at making my YouTube as good as possible to bring you guys as much no nonsense straightforward straight talking training advice as i possibly can so let me know what you want to know about and i'm going to do my best to make you a video thanks very much guys i'll see you next time